utilize various policies and practices to diminish black land ownership, including discriminatory lending practices that made it difficult for black farmers to access credit and loans, unfair property tax assessments that disproportionately burdened black landowners, legal loopholes that allowed for the seizure of land, often through tax sales and eminent domain, lack of protection against fraudulent land deals or contracts that exploited black farmers, limited access to government programs and subsidies that would have supported black farmers in maintaining their land. These policies and practices, among others, contributed to the widespread loss of black owned farmland in the South. Other tactics used by municipal governments and other entities to reduce black land ownership in the South included intimidation tactics, such as the threat of violence or legal action to pressure black landowners into selling their land, racially motivated violence and terrorism, such as lynchings and property destruction to instill fear and force black families off of their land, unjust land seizure through legal means, such as manipulating property laws or engaging in corrupt practices to acquire black owned land systemic disenfranchisement and exclusion from political processes leading to a lack of representation and protection for black landowners. Limited access to legal recourse or support to challenge unfair land transactions or practices that targeted black farmers. These methods combined with historical and systemic racism contributed to the significant loss of black land ownership in the South. When municipal government collaborates and conspires to limit the ability of black and brown communities to practice self-determination through, through justice, they contribute to the legacy of black land loss in our current day. When municipal government representatives ask community organizations if they're going to grow illegal narcotics on land that they own, it is a poltergeist throwing back to the legacy of black land loss, black land owner intimidation, and legal conspiring to prohibit black farming. When municipal government leaders limit discourse in regard to zoning changes, they conspire to reduce the ability of black and brown community members to farm in service of increased access to healthy food. When municipal government organizations who do not farm assess project proposals for farming in communities without the expert opinion of those community members, they conspire to reduce and diminish the capacity for black and brown communities to respond to the need for access to healthy food in their own communities. When municipal government leaders demand that black farmland does not sell produce on the land, it diminishes the capacity of black farmers to enter into the market and create sustainable business models that ensure their success. When municipal government leaders prohibit the amount of volunteer opportunities that can occur on black farmland, they contribute to the legacy of black land loss and lack of community involvement in the food system. They contribute to the lack of community members participation in food justice to reduce their limited access to healthy food. When municipal government leaders refuse to meet with community organizations with decade-long track records in increasing access to healthy food, they co-conspire with systemic racist discriminatory policies from yonder and bring those spirits into our world today in an effort to diminish the ability for communities to respond and solve their own problems. The legacy of black land loss lives with us today and municipal government leaders' resistance 
to urban agriculture and their resistance to community organizations, redistribution of land to BIPOC farmers, and their resistance to funding and creating opportunities for a new generation of regenerative farmers to respond to the need for hyper-local produce in communities that have been historically marginalized by systemic racist policy. Black land laws lives with us today. Systemic racism lives with us today. Our work is necessary. Our advocacy is necessary. Our direct action is necessary. The transformation of the built environment is necessary. And municipal governments can either play a role in the resurgence of resilient communities, or they can be complicit in an arc of injustice that continues to perpetuate black social inequity and loss of land.